In this session, we will discuss RLEs or run length encoded vectors from genomic ranges. Run length encoding is a way of representing very long vectors where uh, some elements are the same. This is a form of uh, compression of the very long vectors. And whether or not the compression works depends on the type of data we are looking at. This type of compression is particularly interesting uh, for representing signal over the genome where the signal is only non-zero um, in a small part of the genome. That's true, for example, for RNA sequencing, where we are only supposed to have signal over transcribed regions. It's true for chip sequencing, and it's true for many other uh, applications. The standard thinking of uh, the standard way of getting uh, of getting uh, uh, the standard example of an RLE in uh, in in genomics is a coverage vector. A coverage vector is something that comes out of high throughput sequencing, and it details for each base in the genome how many short reads covers that particular base. Okay, enough talking. Let's see some examples. It's going to be a little bit easier to see it in practice. So let's first uh, load the library. And let's construct an RLE, which we do uh, with the uh, capital RLE constructor. So we take a single vector. And we get the RLE output. So let's look at it. So what it has done now is that it says this vector starts off with 6 with the value 1, and the value 1 is repeated 6 times. Then the value 2 is repeated 5 times, the value 4 is repeated 2 times, and finally the value 2 is repeated 1. So here we can see we have something called lengths, we have something called values, and we access them using run length of aisle and run value. Vial. This is just a way of compressing the vector, and uh, this is a compression in this case here, because we have taken 14 numbers and compressed them into 8 numbers. So this compression makes sense if the same number occurs in the vector right after each other. We can take our rod length encoded vector and convert it back to a normal vector by as numeric. We get the original vector out. There's also something to, to make the confusion total. There's uh, something in, uh, in base R called RLE, which is also a run length encoded, um, uh, run length encoded vector, but uh, has a completely different API. So often, you, so think about this. You have your run length encoded vector, which is now coverage or signal across the entire genome. And very often you want to do operations where you have a set of genomic regions and you want to do something over them. So let's simulate that. You use, you use this with the, you, you, you do this with the aggregate function. But let me take an example. We take an I ranges. Let's say the start is going to be 2 and 8. And let's say the width is equal to 4. So this gives me certain, a certain subset of the RLE. And I can uh, now aggregate. I take my run length encoder vector. I take my I ranges. And as my function, I could take the mean. I get two numbers back. And this is the mean of all the elements that are in the two different ranges. So it's the mean of... Uh, Let's say we take our original vector. We got that by saying as numeric of aisle, of aisle. and we got and we take and we take the mean of vector two to five index by two to five mean of that, and from eight to eleven. So this could, for example, compute average signal across a set of pre-specified genomic regions of a coverage vector. You uh, can construct a coverage vector out of I ranges. That can be useful sometimes. So let's say you have you have our I ranges. Uh, let's make a new I ranges. Uh, 
So I have these overlapping uh, 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 intervals, and I can say what's the coverage of this, by which I mean uh, how often for base num for, for, for integer number one, how many of these ranges is it part of, for integer number two, how many of these ranges is it, is it part of. And I get this run length encoded uh, vector that goes like first one, two, and then it's three for a little while, and then two, one, because of the structure of my I ranges. Um, of course, I could do this with uh, G ranges and, uh, and and genomic indexing. We're going to look at that a little bit later on. Sometimes you have a you have a covered vector, you have an alley, and you really want to figure out uh, areas where this uh, uh, vector are big, and I want to get that back as like uh, uh, intervals. The way you do that is you use the slice function. So you can think of the coverage function as giving you kind of a function along the genome, and now we slice the top off. So let's take our RLE from before, and let's slice it at a value of two. So now we get a views back, but let's ignore the views for a moment. We get a single integer from seven to 14, and these are all the positions, and in this case, there's a single, a single interval uh, containing all of the position where the vector is greater than two greater than or equal to two. Uh, we could do the same thing with slicing it at a little bit higher up, then we get a much smaller interval. So we got back a kind of, we got back a views object, uh, and this is completely the same, and in a way exactly the same as the views object we have discussed for BS genome object. So we have one potentially very big object, which is the run length encoded vector. Think about vectors across the entire genome, and we basically have indexes or intervals uh, uh, which subsets this very long vector. Uh, and we do that using this views constructor, but now instead of having a view on a genome, we have a view on a run length encoded vector. We can instantiate our own views, of course. And um, and once we have a view, or we have a set of views, let's make a set of views. Uh, we can we can compute functions on these views here. So for example, let's say we just wanna take the mean of the view. And this is basically, um, the same as what we did with the aggregate example uh, above. Let's do the same thing with genomic ranges. Instead of I ranges, now everything is on chromosome one, and we do a uh, coverage of that. It was a little bit of a uh, of, of quick typing, and uh, we now get back something called an Ali list because we have one RLE for each chromosome. In this case, we just have a single chromosome, but if it was normal human data, we would have like uh, many more many more chromosomes or contexts. But here's a, it's a single one, and inside of that we have an RLE. When we have a genomic range like this, or, or an RLE list like this, we can instantiate, we can, we can, we can again instantiate a view on it. And now we give it like, let's say, uh, a, um, yeah, let's view it on, on, on the G ranges we had before. No, let's view it on like uh, uh, G ranges. Uh, Chromosome one and uh, ranges and I ranges uh, three, two, seven. So now we get an error back. It says that the ranges list must be a ranges list object. This is a type of object we haven't discussed from genomic ranges. But aside from G ranges, there's these things called ranges data, 
range data and ranges lists that really are more they were an attempt at providing a tree range like object it was by some accounts successful but it hasn't really stuck around we still see these objects being around here and there so the way you really solve this is you uh, coerce it so you take this g range and you just like say okay let this be a, a, a let this be a ranges list And now we have this Ali uh, views list, and let's take uh, what we have, what we see on chromosome one. And now we have a views uh, exactly as we wanted from position three to seven. It's a little weird that G ranges doesn't work directly as input into views. Uh, I would consider that a kind of a bug, and uh, I'm uh, definitely going to discuss that with the bioconductor people. So now we've learned about run length encoded vectors. We have learned that we can have them both on the integers, but we also can have them uh, on um, on the genome. We can also have run, we don't just need to have run length encoding of integers, we can have run length encoding of logicals or even characters or, um, uh, or, uh, or logicals. Uh, actually, come to speak of it, if you look at a G range, you can see that the seek names or the chromosome names are uh, we can now recognize that these are run length encoded vectors because we often have all the ranges on chromosome one next to each other. We have learned about uh, how to compute on them using aggregate and views. <coughs> we have learned how to convert a G ranges into a RLE by coverage, and we have learned we can slice off the coverage.